What's up everybody, it's your boy Rue and we are back for another Trails of Coast Tale video. Last time we had a couple of events happen that can lead to some very interesting implications for what's happening in the Empire and specifically in the Krusian province. So first things first, we completed the simple quest of just exchanging the Orbment Light. Nothing much really happened there, we came across some monsters but uh, we didn't actually fight them, it was just on screen thing, all we had to do is put in a code. When we got back, we went over to the uh, East Celtic Highway, took care of a monster. And once we took care of him, when we were talking to the farmhouse, uh, the farmer at the ha house, he said that he didn't ask the provincial army to help him out because they haven't been helping anyone in Celtic recently. And if you remember, a couple videos back, that when we encountered the provisional guard, they were giving us attitude. So though I found that interesting, they wouldn't help the Celtic people. And then when we got back to the market, to the Celtic town, there was that the incident at the marketplace where you had two merchants that both had a permit for the exact same period of time for the exact same stall. And uh, the uses, the uses of Barry's father, the Duke, the leader of the Krusian province is the one that hands out the permits. So the fact that he gave out two permits at the same time for the same spot to two different merchants is very shady. And then during that incident, we met Otto, the manager. We had a nice little conversation with them. And right now we are about to head back into the inn and have a nice, probably a nice dinner and talk about some of the events that happened today. Let's get right into it. Yep. So that's it. That's all for day one. Day one quests are all done. All the field work is done. Otto is closing up the grand market. So you know, it should be a nice peaceful night. Ugh,ごちそうさま. <sighs> Oh yeah, one, one other thing we found out in the pre previous uh, video part that I thought was fairly interesting is that because of the railroad, cheap goods are not being uh, more uh, are not being able to be exported more easily. So the real high quality goods have increased in price. Thought that was a little fun fact. Ah. さすがに地の物の料理は違うな。ライ麦を使ったパンもなかなかの美味だった。うーん。こんな楽しみがあるなら特別実習も悪くないけど。今頃ビーハンの絵馬たちはどうしてるのかしら。Definitely not this. They're either fighting or they're they had to separate uses and Machias, I can guarantee that. I low-key wish we could have saw that. I would have been very interested in that. Come on, let's talk about what just happened. It's definitely not the only reason. I just think Arcus is a main, is like one of the, one of the factors for sure, but I highly doubt it's the main reason. Exactly, because we did use it for the one mission for the monster, but the... For the most part, it, we didn't really need Arcus's Loki. She's just trying to make you guys experience the like the actual real world, you know? Because you can practice all the military ex exercises you want, you can practice all the training, study all the books, but if you don't get out there in real life, none of it matters. Come on, my boy. 
Let's see that big brain. まあ、あんまり深く考えずにやってみたら。どうやら何かを見つけようと少し焦ってるみたいだけど。まずは飛び込んでみないと立ち位置も見出せないわよ。士官学院を死亡した理由が同じというわけでもないだろうし。That last part that Sarah said is kind of is very interesting. When there's a big gust, you get blown away if you don't plant yourself. That's a little foreshadowing, if you ask me. So remember, class 7 was kind of just put together. Like, for them, it's just on the spot. Like, they don't know each other at all. They all came to the academy for different reasons. They're all from different backgrounds. It's not like... Like, class 1 and 2, they're all nobles. They all have noble background. Class... Three, four, and five, they're all commoners, so they have that. Whereas in here, it's all different, all different, a lot of differences. Training to get stronger, I can pretty much guess, like, based off how she is at the beginning. Oh, uh, she's talking about her father right here. I'm pretty sure it's her father. So I can tell you, it's definitely not anyone at this table. What the hell? Arisa no hoa doda. So, ne. Iroiro arundakedo. Jiritsu stakata karakana. Joto, jikato umaku ite nai no moharushi. She's still keeping her like her family background under wraps. Probably still not comfortable with talking about it with, with these guys. If you watch the bonding events, the video I put out, then you know what he was what he's talking about right here. Same thing with Laura actually, because during Laura's bonding event with Reen, she also we, we talked about her father. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> eh. For me personally, I really like Reen's reason just because I kind of relate to that, to that, what he's about to say kind of a lot. At least if I remember correctly. Let's find out. So he's the last one and he's the one that brought it up. So he wants the answer for, for the question. Makes sense. Makes sense. So they're all kind of shook, but Laura, remember when um I believe it was the previous video when after we finished the monster quest, she was looking at Reen super suspiciously. So I feel like she's been like sensing something from him. So that's why she's always very intent when it comes to him and some of the stuff he says. It even goes back to the bonding event when Reen was trying to compliment her and like was trying was flat, uh, being flattery or just, you know what I'm trying to say. He was, he was complimenting her about how dedicated she is to the sword. And then when she tried to say that he could do it too, he was just shrugged, he just shrugged it off. He paid no mind to it. And then she noticed something was off there as well. いや、その別に大層な話じゃないんだ。あえて言葉にするならそんな感じというか。Even like real world stuff, like you know, finding your like your own identity is is very important, you know. いいじゃない、かっこよくて。うん、自分を見つけるか。Especially for Reen, because his backstory is a little, it's a little, a little some, you know what I'm saying? It's a little some, some. 
変なことを口走ったな<笑> Yeah, see, she's so serious. Look at that. She really like sees through him in the, in the beginning right here. She's definitely noticed something about him. Second day, right back to more quests. So, tomorrow will be our last field study day here. Alright, what we got? I t o u g h t I'm going to report to the report. I'm going to report to the report. I'm going to report to the report. I'm going to report to School life. We all been there, done that, or some of us still doing that. <laughs> That's right, she was super upset about the, the whole room thing. She has, like, maybe it has to do with her need for independence, like how she was talking about at the table right now, but she, she, she's very, like, closed off ish and gets embarrassed fairly easily. Yeah. Okay. What does she got to say? She's finally speaking up. She's been staring at my mans for a minute now. What's going on? I'm a little bit of a mess, but I'm going to go ahead and talk to you. Sonata, why don't you give me the money? Yo, oh, I love this moment so much. This is one of my favorite Laura Reed moments. Uh? Plus, it's also something that Ness had to have had to happen for him for his own personal growth, which is why I like this a lot. Sonata no Ken, so s t e t a c h i s u j i Say the name, say the name. Hachio i t o r i u n i m a c h i g a i n a i n a Yeah, eight leaves, one blade school. Let's go. Oh, Ken s e n ユン・カーファイが起こした東方剣術の集大成とも言うべき流派。So I actually don't know if it appears in any games, but I've only played the Trails Coast series and then Hajimar, and I've yet to actually see him. If there's a game where he actually appears, I really would want to play that because I want to actually see him, you know? If I get to use him, that would be even better. 海殿に立ったものは、断りに通ずる達人として、剣聖とも呼ばれるという。Can say sword master divine blade, bruh. Kuashin dana. Take o k e a h o t o n o s i r a t e n a r u h a n h a s n a n d a k e o Waga a r z e d o Ruha, k o r u Nagara, Hokano Ruhano, k e n k u m o k a k a s t e o r a n e Our s a i t s go meaning basically her family sword style. So t h a t is Chichini, w a t a t a n o d a そなたが剣の道を志すならばいずれ八王のものと出会うだろう I'm, I'm sorry like like with this saying like these sayings in Japanese sounds way cooler than if it was in English like I can't help but feel this way oh man it just hits it, it hits you differently you know 光の検証が<笑>光栄というか恐れ多いというか俺はただの書伝止まりさ確かに一時期ユン・ロウ氏に指示していたこともあるだが剣の道に限界を感じてロウ氏から修行を打ち切られた身だえそのだから別に手を抜いてるわけじゃないんだ He's kind of lying right here like he is holding back but at the same time he's kind of not 八王の名を怪我しているのは重々分かっているけどこれが俺の限界だ誤解させたのならすまない Now that part I believe 
this so right now like his current state of capability he is this is pretty much his limit for the time being but a, a part of him is still holding back like for sure just because probably has to do with that i need to find myself type thing i need to go out there in the world you know i need to find my identity i need to like all that stuff probably plays a role to why he's holding back as well as his internal fear as far as what he's afraid of i'm not going to mention yet we'll find out later on if you know you know ラウラ。その他自身の問題だ。私に謝る必要はない。いい傾向相手が見つかったと思ったのだがな。で、あ。少し外で素振りをしてくれ。Yeah, she's so straightforward. It's kind of crazy. Like the the personality between her like and her characteristics with Emma and then Elisa and then Fee, like they're so drastically different. It really makes for like a well-rounded group. That's one of the things, my favorite things of class seven. Like all the different characteristics, how they interact with each other and how they like uh Combine with each other and how they relate. Like it's all like it's it's pretty it's really good story writing, and how they all develop together individually and individually. It's awesome. It's amazing. I can't wait to go through this guy with you guys. Kind of like you. Loki, she be watching him like a lot. Honestly. Yeah, she has. Uh huh, sure. You keep telling yourself that. でも何かを抱えてるのは誰だって同じなんじゃないかな君だってそうじゃないのそれは確かにそうね I have to say for a first field study in the first day like there's actually a substantial amount of content that happens and character development and interactions a plus, A plus. Oh, I have no idea what I just got because I, I clicked the X too fast. Hopefully it's a equip because I kind kind of need equips right now. I'm pretty I'm running dry. All right, day two. What do we got in store? What do we got in store for us today? Our last day in Keldic. Only optionals. So we got another monster. And then lost the wallet. I'll probably keep the monster in here. In the video. The wallet, I highly doubt anything interesting is gonna happen. But we still have all day. Like he could have okay, he's a considerate man. He could have gave us something like a little bit more. I mean, we got like the whole day ahead of us. Cause isn't it didn't they say 6 a.m.? So 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. that's a whole lot of time. <laughs> They're both so nervous around her now because of last night. That's pretty funny. She is highly, she has like that intimidating presence for like, for those peer group. Like obviously like higher class, like swordsmen and warriors don't feel anything from her. 
but for like them, I can understand why they get intimidated by her, for sure. Or they just don't want to do it. Maybe I just read too much into that, I don't know. Or maybe they were nervous because of this tension. That's respectable. That's respectable, so he's basically apologizing for just disrespecting the general path. Like for anyone who follows that way of life. Because for them it's very serious, you know? It would be like, equivalent would be like someone that really focuses and puts, puts their all into their career. And this basically defines their life. If you were to dis disrespect that kind of way of living, it would be it would offend that person as well. So that's kind of what it, kind of similar situation here. Probably she's probably talking about himself. Yeah. See, this is this is also I said earlier in the beginning. Reen has a lot like not that much self confidence and doesn't view himself in a very high standing. She finally smiled after what feels like so many frames of just freaking staring eyes and just intimidation. So a little heart to heart. This part is really cute. I like this. It's pretty funny. Not this, not this. Yeah, <laughs> I like it. See, she always like, one thing I, I love about her is that she's always like friends first. She always cares about the other people. But she also gets embarrassed easily. Alright, we've got trouble. Like, we're just, this OST right now is not like conducive with trouble. It needs to change. Can we get a beat drop? Let's get a beat switch. Like, I can't feel the suspense with this super low melody playing. Can you already said that? What's the trouble? At the market? Oh, lord. I'm still waiting for this beat drop. Is there no beat drop? Like, come on, man. I need a switch. I need a beat switch. This is too lax for trouble. Especially if it involves the Grand Market. I love the Grand Market. Took place last night. Two of the stalls at the market were destroyed and all merchandise were stolen. What? If I had to, never mind, never mind. I kind of remember this. I kind of don't, so I don't want to say anything. <laughs> Gotta get that business going.
Yeah, this definitely we can't we have to check it out. Are you kidding me? It's literally right there. It's like 20 steps. All these people gathered. Let's see what some of them have to say. I don't know what this guy be talking about sometimes. I think this is the guy that works at the Orbo factory. Or like the Orbo store. Or is he the roaming guy? I don't know. Okay. I'll check one more person. Let's check her. Oh, and you can see them in the distance. It's the same two guys from before, the previous day. Yeah, I figured she was going to say something like this because of the way she's dressed. And look and behold, she actually did. Yep, it's us. Can you move aside so we can check out the scene? Yeah, it's the same two guys that were fighting that they had the same permits. Students to the rescue, let's go. Yep, it's the same two guys that had the same permits. So, if you remember correctly, the solution to the problem of them having the two same permits was that Otto suggested that one person use the front stop for a week and the second person, the other one would use the back stop for a week and then they trade places. Okay, so now the guy in the suit is blaming him for destroying it, probably like sabotage, but that doesn't make any sense. I'm the Dalian snob. <laughs> okay, so who had the spot first? I, I don't. I don't know who had it first, because that's kind of like I kind of want to know. That's fairly important. Here we go once again. I can't, you can't really blame them though a little bit just cause like they, they spent a lot of resources just to be able to get here and bring their products. So for this to happen to their stalls, obviously they're gonna go into a blind rage. Well, stole, the stalls destroyed and goods stolen. Let's not forget their goods are stolen. Okay, so they were both destroyed. Both of their stalls were destroyed. So both of their goods were stolen, both of their stalls destroyed. So they're both under the same circumstances and they're both accusing each other. <laughs> it's pretty funny. They're accusing each other of the same thing and the same things happen to them. I find this fairly like hilarious, honestly. Man, you old man, you ain't gonna do nothing. From here, it kind of looks like he's holding his neck. Low key, like it looks like he's choking him. Ah, now all of a sudden the provincial army wants to come and intervene. 
Because remember, they didn't intervene with any other issues. Like, there's literally monsters near farmhouses, on the highways, close to town, and they wouldn't do nothing. But all of a sudden, they want to act. Let's see what good is going to come from this. His attitude is so infuriating. He's just gonna arrest them both, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> His logic is probably like both of their stuff is destroyed and taken so they both did it to each other. Is that his logic? Absolutely ridiculous. He's not even like, he didn't even take a second to think about it either. Like he just, oh, okay, done, take him away. That easy, that quick. Yeah, like I said, yeah, he's, he's, he's saying they did it at the same time, which makes no other, it makes no common sense, like, what type of BS is that? Look at, uh, Laura's gonna, oh, come on, Laura, sometimes it's just better not to speak your mind. That. So Alisa was saying that they're trying to just sweep this problem under the rug because remember like This depending on how this uh, situation gets portrayed. It could look bad on the Duke who's essentially their boss But I don't think that's the reason why they're, they're acting this way Super arrogant, that guy. Literally did nothing. They, they basically just caused more problems. So remember, just this is a side note that I'm j I just thought of right now. Like it has nothing to do with this current what's going on right now. But Machius and Eustace have a lot of problems. Eustace is the son of the Duke, and the provisional army that was just here works under that Duke. So you can kind of see why like there's so much of uh, like commoners have so much negative views as or like yeah negative views towards like nobles, especially that house specifically because of the way they conduct themselves. Just a, just a little side thought I just had right now, when I, when I just saw that ordeal. I mean, they kind of got co coerced into coming down, so they don't really have an option right now. No, we can't close the grand market. So, so much business is going to get lost from this. So much business is going to get lost just because of this little incident. Okay, so they did open it. Okay. They just opened it late. I thought they were going to close it for the whole day. That would have been a disaster. It's all part of the job. Well, not technically the job, but all part of our schoolwork. If only we got paid for this, so that way I can get some Mira.
So, Otto is saying that the provisional army has is showing signs that they have no intention of resolving any problems. Now remember, the Duke Alberia is trying to tax the market even more heavily. So this could this could be a, a tactic. You know what I'm saying? Like. Oh, you want our help? You want the provisional army's help? You need to pay these taxes. If not, these problems are just going to keep happening. I don't know. Would, would he stoop that low to do something like this? I don't know. We'll find out. But that's definitely what I'm thinking because he wants to tax them. He's not helping with it. He's not. He probably commanded like the provisional army isn't helping with monsters or any major problems. And now they actually have like an issue directly related to the market and the goods that are being sold in the market. And they're not doing anything about it? Yeah, he just said it right here. Otto just said it right here. He can't see it changing unless the, the market accepts the sales tax increase. That's so, that's so, so, oh, that infuriates me so much. I mean, they don't have a choice. They literally don't have a choice. They have to accept it. Like, not necessarily they accept the tax, but they have to accept this conclusion for the time being. What's going on in your mind, Reen? Ah. The motto of class 7, meddling kids, it's their MO. Class 7's MO is meddling. I mean, you didn't even give us that many quests, so I don't mind. I think instructor Sarah would be disappointed if, if they talked to her first because before so she was here right after we were right before we were about to go back into the inn and then she went to go to group B but before leaving she said I believe she told them something like to think, think about what's happening and make a decision for yourself something along those lines. Put your heads together and think I'm sure you'll know, see what you need to do yeah. That's one of my favorite a that's one of my favorite aspects of Sarah as an instructor. Like she allows them to do their own thing, make mistakes, learn, improve. She doesn't force ideals on them. But that's also part of her laziness. Elliot always so hesitant. That's right. Uh, we got swords. We got orbal, orbal bows. We got an orbal staff. We'll be fine. <laughs> He's always so worried, Elliot. Before the investigation, though, I want to take care of that monster real quick. That's a fair point. So the Grand Market stall was destroyed during the night. Both of the stalls, front and back. We don't know who did it. For whatever reason, the army is not helping. We are implying 
based off the signs of what's happening in recency that they don't want to help a, the a grand market until they accept the taxes. So that's basically the situation right now. But we don't know who's actually committed the crimes. Eh. I mean, they're planning on talking to those two. I don't know how much information you'll get out of them, honestly. Because they were. I highly doubt they were actually at the stall and they would have seen anything. Let's investigate, let's go. Alright, first let me see if I can... I think I have to do this first. Can I go to a highway? Let's see if I can go to a highway. Yeah, we can go to a highway. Okay. So I'm actually going to cut the video here. We shall start the investigation in the next one. We saw some very interesting, another more interesting events happening relating with the provisional army and the grand market. So let's see where this leads. Thank you guys for watching. Have a nice day and I will see y'all in the next video. Peace.